Hi everybody, okay, welcome back. We're looking today at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek. We're right at the end of chapter five, and just a couple of notes, as promised, on some of the vocabulary right here in this chapter. Uh, the two points to make, uh, Duff mentions them briefly, but they are worthy of a little bit further elucidation. The first is that, did you know in Greek, there are two different words for Jerusalem? There are indeed. Um, if they're both used with roughly the same kind of frequency, so it's not the case that one's the normal word in the New Testament and the other's the rare word. Uh, the two words for Jerusalem are Hierosoluma, Hierosoluma, and Hierusalem. Just notice a couple of differences. Rough breathing, Hierosoluma, and smooth breathing, Hierusalem. And it's important to understand some of the grammatical differences between them. Oh, before we do that, do notice, by the way, and this should be obvious to you, that the iota epsilon is not a diphthong in either word. There is no iota epsilon diphthong. It's an epsilon iota diphthong, which is why the breathing comes before the iota, the iota being a capital iota, otherwise it will come over the top of the iota. If that's all scrambled nonsense to you, then you need to go right back to the stuff in chapter one about breathings and just revise that video. Okay, let's look at the differences between these two words. First up, let's look at the one on the left. This uh, form of the word for Jerusalem, hierosoluma, is a neuter plural word. Now this sounds really strange when you first think about it, but it's just the way it is. Um, it has the same uh, uh, morphology or form as a neuter plural noun, like erga. Now look at the endings in the nominative, accusative, genitive, dative. You can see that. Erga, erga, ergon, ergois. Well, in the nominative, accusative, genitive and dative, um, that's what happens with hierosoluma. In uh, hierosoluma, hierosoluma, as usual, the nominative and accusative in the neuter are the same in form. Genitive, hierosolumon and dative, hierosolumois, which means that if you're using them in context where those different uh, forms are appropriate, you need to decline the noun uh, hierosoluma uh, appropriately. So if you want to look them up, um, here are some references where you'll find them. In Matthew chapter 2 verse 3, um, you'll find the nominative form of hierosoluma, where um, Herod the king heard um, all about the birth of this baby and he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. All Jerusalem is Passa Hierosoluma, all Jerusalem, and it's the subject of the verb um, troubled and therefore it's in the nominative case. In, in, uh, uh, if you want an example of the accusative case, you find that in Galatians chapter 2 verse 1 where Paul says that uh, after 14 years he went up again to Jerusalem. That's Ace Hierosoluma. And ace, as you know, is a preposition that governs a noun in the accusative. So ace hierosoluma. Uh, an example of hierosoluma in the genitive case. Sorry, did I say genitive for this one? If I did, brain scrambled. Uh, accusative, ace hierosoluma. An example in the genitive case, um, you find in Matthew 15 verse uh, 1, when the Pharisees and the scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem, that's apo hierosolumon. Apo, a preposition which governs a noun in the genitive case, so appropriately, apo hierosolumon, and then finally in the dative case, uh, a great persecution arose against the church in Jerusalem, in Acts 8 verse 1, in Jerusalem is en hierosolumois, in Jerusalem, en being a preposition which governs a noun in the dative case. Notice in each instance it's a plural form of the noun. There is no significance. There is no significance in the plural form of the noun. I'm, I'm unaware even of uh, any research that's been done indicating that there's any difference in the significance of the two words. Uh, I suspect that there is no significance uh, in the difference between using this word and this word. The reason is because if there were, you would hear it all the time in sermons because it would have made its way into the popular preacher's mind and uh, you'd get, oh, this is the plural Jerusalem and here is the singular Jerusalem and people would make a big deal out of it if there was any evidence that there was a difference. And I therefore suspect that there's absolutely no difference uh, between the two forms there's certainly no significance in the fact that this form is a neuter plural. It's just a quirk. Uh, at least that's, um, as, that's all we need to know about it at this stage. Okay, so that's the neuter plural form. The feminine 
singular indeclinable form is on the right. Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Now, indeclinable simply means that its form doesn't change with its case. Now, don't get confused here. That doesn't mean its case doesn't change. Just because it will always look like this doesn't mean it's always in the gen in the nominative case. It may sometimes be in the accusative, genitive, uh, dative cases. In fact, it's possible even that it's in the vocative case. I don't know which form Jesus uses when he speaks of, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. I says, obviously, that's going to be in the vocative case, or I'd have thought so, unless there's something very odd going on. I need to go and check that. But... Um, uh, the point is not that it doesn't change case. It does come in different cases. The point of an indeclinable word is that it doesn't change form when it changes case. You can't tell the case from the form. So you have to infer the case from the context. So obviously, if you've got an example and you get, for example, this um, uh, word, Jerusalem uh, uh, is used in Luke 10 um, for verse um 30, when Jesus is uh, talking about the parable of the Good Samaritan, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho is apo, uh, apo Jerusalem. And because the preposition is apo, even though the form of this is Jerusalem, the same as in the nominative, the word is actually in the genitive case, just you can't tell that from looking at the form itself. Okay, so that's the first note, the two alternative words for Jerusalem. Um, the second note um, is, uh, again, on page 64. It's in the middle of the page, and it concerns... I'm going to get rid of this, so just bear with me a second. I'll get rid of some of it anyway. How's that? Um, I'm going to write this. Uh, it concerns Ionios. Ionios, an adjective meaning eternal. Now, like all adjectives, this can come in... Uh, masculine and feminine and neuter gender. However, when Ionios comes in the feminine gender, it uses the masculine forms. So again, don't get confused and be thinking, oh, it's always a masculine noun, or it's always a masculine or a neuter noun, it's never a feminine noun. That's not true. It can be masculine, it can be feminine, it can be neuter. It's just that the masculine form looks like the feminine form. And so it would go Ionios, Ionion, Ionio, Ioni, oops, Ionio, <laughs> Ionio. If you saw any of those forms of the word, you wouldn't be able to tell just from looking at that word whether it was masculine or feminine. You'd have to look at the context, and obviously if it was qualifying a masculine noun, it would be masculine, a feminine noun, it would be feminine, and so on. Now, Neither of these quirks of, vocab <coughs> of vocabulary, excuse me, cause, should cause you any difficulty. I mean, it's not like it's difficult to remember either of the words for Jerusalem, is it? Um, and of course, you can remember which one is the neuter plural noun, because it's got an at at the end, and neuter plural nouns have an at at the end. Uh, the Ionios thing is just a bit quirky, and again, you'll have to uh, uh, spot it. You know, it's the sort of thing that um, you get in you know, halfway through the first year or a quarter of the way through the first year exam questions when they'll give you a verse with Ionios qualifying a feminine noun and they'll ask you to comment on the form of any of the words in the sentence and there might be four marks for it and a couple of the marks will be for commenting on the fact that this takes the uh, masculine form even when it qualifies feminine nouns but don't worry about it you'll get used to it it's actually quite a common word and so it's not going to cause you any problems okay that'll do we are done we are done with chapter five and so we're going to move on uh, next uh, to chapter six it's going to be exciting because what we're going to learn there we've got f uh, three completely new tenses to learn so all the stuff you've been doing so far has been in the present tense with verbs luo luais luo luomen lueta luusin we're going to learn three new tenses, and it's going to be pretty exciting. It's going to be quite a challenge, but actually, once you start to see the patterns, and I'll explain all the patterns to you, it's not that difficult, and you will massively expand the range of different things you're able to talk about and able to read. Uh, you'll, there's a huge amount more New Testament that you'll be able to read at the end of the next chapter. So keep going, 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, 20 or 30 minutes, uh, uh, five or six days a week, and we'll have you reading the New Testament in no time. All right, God bless. Bye for now.